It's, I see that it says live now. And I, I think I'm going to just use the, um, the browser window. All right, we are live here, finally. Got we did a little, it. A little anal fatigue from that whole process, Dave, but we are live here, finally. I'm super excited. We are sharing this on Facebook Live. Um, we are gonna continue where we left off the other day, talking about um, the basics when you're recovering with a stress problem, um, you're exhausted, you're burnt out, and you wanna take health into your own hands. Um, you may or may not be um, really uh, on board with the uh, traditional model, or, or you may be, but right now you know that it's time to take health into your own hands. And we talked about this last time, Dave, so give us a quick little introduction about who you are and how we can help people that are exhausted and tired and burnt out take the health and put it in their own hands. How do they go about doing that? Yeah, thanks, uh, Dr. Joel. And uh, I've definitely been through it myself after a, a really, really difficult stretch when I was working in Silicon Valley for a, a, a big tech company out there, I had totally fried myself. And um, I was frustrated with the lack of information and tools that were available to me. In my particular case, I had medical records that were in stacks of papers and different patient portals. My functional doctor, like yourself, was asking me to do things like test blood sugar after different meals, try different supplements, run different functional tests. And I ended up with this unwieldy spreadsheet where I tried to like figure out, okay, are things getting better or worse? Because I pretty much had no other choice. If I didn't go put all those PDF files of my blood tests into a spreadsheet so I could see them on one row, it was almost really impossible for me to know if things were getting better or not. So just being a technologist, I built a software program to automate a lot of this stuff for me. And my functional doctor was in Texas. I was in California, much like yourself. I'm assuming you're working with people all over the place who are not able to come into your brick and mortar office. So all we did was we'd, we'd meet just like you and I are meeting on Skype. I'd share my screen and we'd use my software program. And it really helped me dial things in. It helped me get educated. It helped me just feel like I had a lot more control over the, pro over the process than I'd ever thought about before. And I had a really successful outcome. All of my symptoms related to uh, maladaptive stress, adrenal fatigue, all of them I was able to completely eliminate through proper lifestyle modification. And so that's how I did it. And you and I are here to talk about how we can help people become their own detective. I've put out an app that makes it easier and we can get into that today, but that's how I ended up where, uh, where I am working on this company. You know, it's a real cool story, Dave. Thanks for sharing. I know that a lot of people listening to this and that they're on Facebook groups and they're on the internet and there's lots of great resources out there and they're on YouTube and, um, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, conflicting information Absolutely. and you don't know you know you don't know what to believe you don't know it, you know you, you you a friend tells you about this or someone can vouch for that um, or you start your own process of going down that rabbit hole and, and figuring out but it's still frustrating because there again you're still left with you know is this better or is that better i think both of these are legit and i don't know which way to go and and you see the more sophisticated patient nowadays and that's adding to their exhaustion and their fatigue and so you take a computer for the lack of a better word nerd like yourself and i mean that in the lovingest way as possible i'll take right? it in the loving as possible yeah, way, yeah joel. yeah because i'm like a nerd but i wasn't a computer in that way um but you anyways like nerd, um, by the way joel i know i know but I, i'm a caring nerd so okay, okay, so right. anyways um yeah so so as far as um you you get this um you know this program and, and now it, what I was going to say is, is that it's not up for, uh, for debate now. Really, it's up for statistical analysis. And you're not putting emotion into it. You're putting results-driven uh, data to apply more of or less of. And, exactly uh, and right. work towards, you know, certain areas of getting better in health. And, and that comes with the learning curve. Um, but the great news about that is, is that now you have a study of one. And like I said last time, 
Um, I really feel that this isn't even a study of one because then you could start to put data together and start to get some real great insights. And that's where you start to have a healthcare revolution, not mm -hmm. just a sickness care, um, uh, um, pacify and, and um, reductionally, reductionistically take this for that and that for this. So I was hoping that there'd be somewhere where there'd be questions because then we could ask um, people view stream on Facebook because then people could ask questions as well. But anyway, so take us through, we talked about last time we ended with, okay, you've put together this program where you can go in there and you can put uh, a spreadsheet together or what does that even mean? Or you can put your database in there. And last time you even talked about um, being able to look at some key numbers, Dave, um, you left off with why you thought glucose was the most important thing to start off with. Um, but let's just take it from the novice where, okay, I get what you're putting down. It makes a lot of sense to me. I, I, I think that if I can look at my own data, keep my study as N equals one, and how do I start and what do I do? And, and that's where we were going to take people through a walkthrough. So you can share your screen. Um, people will still be able to see this and kind of take us through the, the nuts and bolts of doing this. Sure. Well, I think you brought up a few important points there, Joel, that I'll touch on before we start looking at some hard numbers. And one you said was there's a lot of information out there and you can go into and ask for advice and you might get five recommendations on how to deal with hyperthyroidism, adrenal fatigue, and those five may actually all work, but none of them will work for you because everything in healthcare is so individualized. And so what I found was like, how can you cut through all of the noise and really just get down to the brass tacks and that's using data. And so if I go out and ask for a rep recommendation on how to deal with elevated homocysteine and I get five recommendations, I can figure out which one actually works for me by just looking at hard numbers. So you just basically get to test everything, find out exactly what works. And that gives you a lot of confidence in this process because you have the data. And so rather than getting caught up in debate about what works or what doesn't work, I can just retreat back, look at my numbers, and I don't have to get in, involved in, in the discussion because I already know exactly what works for me. And so um, this is Heads Up Health. Maybe I'll just start on our website just to back up even one step further and share a little bit about what we, what we do here. What we've created is a program that lets you become your own health detective. And in this day and age, that is essential for all of us just due to the immense number of forces that are working against our health, environment, diet, etc. So we want to give you some tools to figure out what the heck's going on. You can get signed up and get started with just a basic dashboard. So let's walk through a few numbers here, Joel, and you're, you being the doctor, you can give us some insights here. And uh, let's take a look at some of the, one, one of the most important metrics when you're dealing with any type of condition related to stress and burnout is sleep. And so is, is, is an individual like myself getting enough sleep? And so I've got a device called the Aura Ring, which I know you're familiar with, but there's other sleep trackers out there. And I can look at, for example, okay, I got six hours and 48 minutes last night. That's not really enough. I like to see that number a lot higher. So I know that I'm probably not going to want to push myself today. And if I jump back to one of the other days, you can see here, I got a full eight hours. That's the day where I'm feeling more refreshed. I can push myself a little harder. So just getting some basic sleep statistics in here. Another one I think that's very commonly associated with burnout, adrenal fatigue, is related to heart rate variability. And for those who aren't familiar with this metric, uh, I don't want to go too deep on it, but it, it is essentially helping us look at the stress load that our body is under. So HRV is something you can measure that gives you a, a, a quantifiable number about stress. And so I use that to calibrate how I'm doing. Down here is blood sugar. And as we talked about last time, you asked me, what's the most important number I think everybody should measure? It's blood sugar. Because having healthy and healthy blood sugar controls everything from sleep cycles to appetite to mood, to all kinds of different biological processes. So just waking up every morning and checking your blood sugar. If people take one thing away from today, I would say learn your body's metabolism 
check your blood sugar every morning. And what you'll start to see as you start testing your blood sugar, you'll start seeing it go up or down every morning based on your lifestyle. So if I did a huge workout on Monday, good chance my blood sugar in the morning on Tuesday is going to be lower. So there's just ways to set all this information up and set up the metrics that matter most. For me, I was 32 years old. I had high blood pressure. That was no fun. And so I was tracking my blood sugar every morning. You can see I was a little hot there the other day. But most mornings when I check it, I'm, I'm pretty dialed in. So I was checking this every single day. My doctor had me on a diet and a supplement plan to help with blood sugar, adding magnesium um, and other things. And I was able to track it. So basic dashboarding um, and then equally important, and I think you can probably expand on this, is the blood tests. The first thing I noticed when I put all my medical records in here was that I could actually start to see back much further into my history. I can go back all the way to 2004. So me as the patient, I have way more data on my health than my doctor does. You know, my doctor's known me for the last three years. Actually, I just moved to Phoenix, Arizona. So I have to get a new doctor and he does not have any of this history. So he's got nothing to work with and I've got 16 years worth of data here. And I can look at, okay, how is my cholesterol responding to the protocol Dr. Joel gave me? How is my inflammation responding? And when people can see it for yourself, even if you don't understand all the numbers, you're starting to really make the mental connections. So getting the blood work in here is super important. And then I'll just add one more thing is just having access to trends. You know, this is basically four years of my body weight. And you can see some really interesting patterns emerge. Uh, let me just run this again. But over the last four years, you can see it go up and go down. I was on the ketogenic diet. I was off the ketogenic diet. So you get to trend all of this data. Uh, the screen share is just killing the Wi-Fi bandwidth, by the way. So it's going to take a long time to load. But all this is, Joel, is a, is a glorified spreadsheet. And we make it easy to link up your medical records, your blood sugar readings, your heart rate, heart rate variability, and then work with experts like yourself to dial it in. Yeah, so, so a lot of cool things that you said in there. Um, and, and so it starts with, uh, you know, to track is to know and to know is to change, right? And you can mm -hmm. definitely get some insights on some key values. And those tiles are really nice because you can customize them for the specific tracker. Like you mentioned, like not everyone has the aura, but most everyone has an Apple you know, health or yeah, an Apple, Apple watch, phone Fitbit, or Apple job on, watch, yeah. Uh, anything. So you have, yeah, maybe click on that, connect data just to show people what you got up there. Cause I think that's an important thing that people would like to know about. Yeah, so we want to make it easy to sync all this stuff up. You know, I talk to people every day that say, I've got this device, that device, and the only way I can look at it together is, is punching it in a spreadsheet, and that's just a, a painful process. So you can link up any number of devices here. And again, the Zoom screen share always runs slow. Uh, Withings, iHealth, Fitbit, MyFitnessPal, Apple Watch, uh, Google Fit, and then there's a whole other section here I'm going to open in a moment. As soon as this page refreshes, let's try this one. Uh, the Aura Ring, the Keto Mojo, Chronometer. Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. Screen share just really um, tanks the performance of um, my That's computer. okay. So basically, you got all these different devices that yeah, you people can see are them all here. With. I got my yeah. Apple Watch. I got my Fitbit. I've got a manual scale. I got my Keto Mojo. I got my sleep tracker. Everything's on one dashboard. I just set it up exactly the way I want. And everybody sets up their dashboard differently. So uh, that's up to the individual, but you've just got everything right at your fingertips. And then yeah, you can really you know, start to tune. Yeah. And, and you know what? I haven't been using the features as much as you've been using them because you, you've you designed it. Um, but it's good that we need to talk sort of more so I can get some more insights. But I, I love the idea of integrating the blood work in there. Um, you talked to me when we first told me all about this, that um, doctors from a functional medicine standpoint can put the values in the ranges that they like to see. So they see trends Correct. a lot um, yep. But then what's really nice is it's all accessible in one location. And uh, I think I think that's a slippery slope, though. 
And, and I'll be honest, I think that people that are stressed out, exhausted, um, and frustrated um, that aren't getting their health any better, they're certainly willing to do this because they, they know that it's, the, it's their health on the line. And we talked about this last time, you're really at war. When it comes time to getting your health back, you have to be vigilant every day. Um, but the slippery slope is this, is, is that data tracking in and of itself can, can create stress. And I think the invisible thing that you have in here is, is that um, one of the things that I think David will probably tell you they're really working on too is the, the qualitative information where, you know, he said he was able to look at his magnesium and potentially his relationship on his blood pressure, or he also mentioned that he was able to track his um, body weight and his ketones. And, and there's a lot of things, but if you don't actually start to make um, uh feedback to yourself, like how you felt, because we're all under stress and, and we go through good periods and bad periods and we're more on point than we're not. And, and you want to make sense of this information. If you're taking so much data tracking, you're overwhelmed by the numbers. You need to have the understanding that what are the key points in this that I need to take home so I can make definite changes and how do I feel when it says I'm at a number and, and and or how does it feel when it says I'm at another number you need to correlate that with how you're feeling and being honest but as far as what you were talking about last time tell us about the potential day where we take the the slippery slope out of the the user's hands where they're crunching more numbers now and they're doing all this data tracking only to find out that, you know, they don't have to do as much work because, you know, Heads Up Health has has come up, are, are running P scores or they're, or they're really data driven to be able to see a bunch of different people's values. And you also shared with us what your dream was, where I still sort of felt like there's still a cognitive component to it where you can't just measure numbers. But that being said, tell us about like just the, the, um, the way that the P scores that heads up health and the ability to start to really see trends that you can make the data tracking that much more efficient for people that really want to have huge impacts on their health. Does that make sense? That question? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think that the more inf the nice thing about technology is it's what, what, what consumer health technology is really doing is it's actually giving consumers the tools to really deeply understand their health. So the ability for me to get an aura ring and learn about my sleep quality, the ability for me to get a keto mojo and, and track my blood sugar, the ability for me to order my own genetic test and learn how to alter my diet accordingly. This is all technology that's available to us. And thank goodness we have that because when we're not getting the help we need from conventional medicine, we really have to go study ourselves and use this technology. Where I see things going is where it becomes what I call passively collected data, which means I, I don't even really have to log into the app anymore and, and do anything. It's just the, the information is being collected in the background. So like the Apple Watch is a great example. There's 50 million people out there with Apple Watches, and it's just passively recording heart rate measurements. I don't have to do anything, but all I, all I need to do is log in and, and that entire history is there. And we could then maybe correlate for someone and say, when you eat that certain food, your heart rate goes too high. And so we could just start basically automating the insights for people. I think as the technology matures, that's the direction we'll go is just making it easier and more automated to quickly learn about what's going on inside your body. It's getting better. But uh, that's the ultimate direction is just the software gets more intelligent. The data just becomes easier to track. You could imagine one day where the Apple Watch is doing continuous glucose monitoring. You know, that, that technology is not far off. So just getting more passively collected data and more intelligent software is where we're trying to go with things. Yeah. And, you know, again, like I, I think of the, the times like this where, um, you know where Uber developed and you have um, the, the places where, what's the one, the app where you, you can go to like Chicago and stay in someone's place that they rent out. What's that called? Like a bit, bit, 
Airbnb. So yep. it's interesting, like with the technology advances, you disempower these old monopolies, right? Like you disempower like hotel chains and you disempower, you know, taxi cabs and limos for something that's virtual and something that is, you know, it's not real, any major uh, assets in the sense of just the software. Um, but I, I, like I said, this is a revolutionary idea, Dave, where um, you're doing the same thing for healthcare. Um, I mean, I don't think you ever really want to take the power out of the doctor because you do need smart folks to explain trends. 100%. And, yep. Right. But, but yep. at the same time, the real asset is the data and your ability to um, understand. Now, the other, again, the slippery slope is, well, what about technology? I mean, is it not going to be safe? Is it, you know, am I getting too much EMFs or am I getting too much Bluetooth or, you know, what's, you know, is, is the ends justifying the means? And I really feel that, you know, as the technology advances, the minimization of the exposures and the sophistication of it um, is also going to be such a minimal amount of exposure for the benefit you get out of it. I mean, the benefit you get out of it is having a, a child on the spectrum who smiles and hugs you and having a person who um, is able to focus and concentrate so their loved ones don't have to um, put them in a nursing home and see their brain deteriorate over time. Or for people to get up and sit down with their grandkids because their hips not, I mean, it's really like that impactful, Dave. I mean, amazing things that you're doing. How do people do it in terms of, okay, I, I love the idea. How do I get started on this? How does that work? Uh, you know, the easiest thing is to create an account. You can use it for free for 30 days. Punch in some blood sugar readings, connect up uh, your Fitbit, connect up uh, Keto Mojo, whatever you have. Get some data in there and start messing around with it. Get some basic blood tests in the system. And what we're really trying to help people do is see which lifestyle modifications are going to have the most impact on their health. That's why you've got the dashboard with the lifestyle data and this page with the clinical data. And when we can start to see the whole feedback loop, that's when things get really powerful for the individual. So I would say just go in there, start hacking on it. And um, if you've got questions, people can get in touch with me or they can, um, they can find you. But it's really just meant for people to become their own detective. It's pretty self-explanatory once you get in there. Connect up your stuff. Start measuring your lifestyle. And just make sure, first of all, things are getting better. Second of all, make sure you have your whole medical history. You know, if, if I have to show up tomorrow at a doctor's office and I'm on a business trip and this doctor's never even spoken a word to me in my life and I'm in a, a, an urgent situation, I can give him my entire health history in, in a matter of seconds. So it's also like your disaster recovery plan, you know, just to use a term from the tech world. So yeah, it's out there. People can try it, hack on it, send us feedback, and uh, hopefully it's helpful. We, we, cool. we built it to help people. Yeah. So, okay. So just as far as, um, as far as, okay, they get it for 30 days. Well, I know that there are some tools there that makes it a lot easier to import the data um, and get support that way. Um, or how, what does it look like, you know, like um, to continue on after 30 days? Okay. Yeah. After 30 days, it's a subscription model. You can sub subscribe monthly or annual it's 10 bucks a month, 79 bucks a year. If you have any questions during the first 30 days, you just click on this button right here and our team will respond immediately. We'll yeah, get back I mean, to you with any questions. 10 bucks a month. I mean, seriously, um, you know, to be able to have a place that is coming up with this type of data um, is really, really awesome. Um, I'm excited from the practitioner side of view because now I can look at my people all over the world and, and get this data-driven insights. And I think that's super awesome. Um, yeah, I can just far... invite you here, Joel. So first consult, I just invite you and you have access to my whole health history day one. So that just oh, short circuits a lot of the process. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's a lot of in insights in there. I need to go through some, some, some additional training on all the things that you have because it's so awesome. Yeah, um, we'll And I'm there. excited. Yeah, I'm excited to give you feedback too with the people that I that I work with. I saw a trend today um, where um, we were discussing a person's um, their sleep and they're you know we're becoming metabolically flexible and helping them awesome. um, 
being able to burn, you know, ketones and ha having them to be able to burn glucose. And, uh, but anyways, um, she's, um, she's doing amazing, um, but her sleep scores are off and, uh, and her, her HRV levels are off. And we really went down an avenue that I didn't even anticipate, Dave, until we sort of really looked at that. And I looked at some of the correlations and I wasn't seeing anything. I mean, her steps and her activity was correlated with a certain amount of stuff. Um, but one of the correlations was um, we, we, her, just her sleep was bad and not, it shouldn't have been, it wasn't commensurating with how much work she's putting in and what she's getting out of it her inflammatory, something's off. So we, we reversed and engineered it. And, you know, when it always comes down to head scratcher and you're not really sure, one of the things I've learned as a clinical pearl is what medication are you on? Right. Because uh -huh. that's always like, uh, you know, and, and we kind of came up with that and, and the dosing timing of the medication, which people like take where sometimes it's not time released and you have yeah. to get up and do it at a certain time or whatever that messes up your circadian rhythm. And we went down this pathway where we would never have gone down that pathway, Dave, had I have the data-driven insight and also sort of the ninja-like skills to kind of come up with. Like That's you the know, whole point, it, man. Yeah, Get the yeah. data, work with, work with a stud like Dr. Joel, figure it out. And there you go. And, uh, you know, the nice thing is sometimes you're, you're working with more than one health professional. This, this individual obviously has a conventional medicine doctor and also works for someone like yourself. So this puts her at the center of it all. And uh, that's awesome. So did the sleep scores go up? Um, no, we just talked about this today. <laughs> so, um, so, but you know, what's really nice is, um, is on those tiles, um, I got to talk to you about this. I told her I would ask you, but um, you know how you have like different intake, like caffeine, alcohol. So for caffeine, we weren't able to change the, the actual, I'm sure you could teach me, the actual category, like what it is. And we're using caffeine as the medication. And she is going to work with the doc that prescribed it and start titrating down. And so we can look at 80 milligrams, you know, down to 70 milligrams, down to 60 milligrams. And then we could start to look at those correlations between glucose, HRV, readiness. Awesome, Pretty man. cool stuff. Pretty cool yeah, stuff. Get, get the medications down. Make sure that uh, this individual is... Uh, getting some good sunlight, sun exposure early in the day and some good sweat and titrate down the medications and uh, then some good sleep hygiene, you know, cold bedroom, dark room type yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'm yeah. curious to hear the output. Those are a few clinical pearls for you, Joel, directly from the software engineer. No charge for that. Okay, Mr. Rosen. What, what clinical pearls? The ones I just gave you? The ones I just gave you, my friend. I just rattled them off. Yeah, I, I know those ones already, my friend. I know. I'm, I I'm just I'm just teasing you. I was I, I okay. was trying to I was trying to I was trying to take a jab at my fellow Canadian brethren. Okay, well, you know what? You you're just showing off. I'm showing yeah. that you know your stuff. Yeah. But I know my stuff too. But I would tell you this though that that clinical pearl of the medication and always having like a wild card in the game. And then what's really nice about it, Dave, what you've designed is the ability to track it. I mean, is un, is just amazing. And then, I like it. I said, put, I was gonna ask you, are there tags where you can put on like subjective feelings? Like, you know, on this day I had this or this day I had that, you know, yeah, is there been, a way to do that? We've been getting a lot of requests for the subjective feature. So I'm gonna bump it up on our um, product board. And uh, next time we connect, I'll show you how to properly track the medications instead of having to use caffeine. So um, we can spend some time on that. Well, yeah. See, I mean, I'm I'm just a whiz kid. I'm just well, going whatever. As I, go. I mean, that works, right? You, you guys found a way to get it to work. You, you have some proxy metric to get the medication on there and then graph it with the sleep data. I mean, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Well, that's that's how health is, right? I mean, like it is a, it, it's a, um, like you said, it's a, it's war, and you got, you, you know, what, why? What's your why? Like, what was your why? You never told me. What was your why when you, you know, you realized you were dealing with, you know, a health issue, and the doctors weren't giving you the answers, and like, what, you, you know, you don't just. You got to have a strong why when it comes to health, because the people I talk to, it's like, yeah, I, I can't see my kids um, enjoy their their high school occasions. I can't do this, that and the other. What was your why? 
You know, for me, Joel, actually, the stress was so bad, I started having um, panic attacks, which was like, you know, I was 32 years old, fit, healthy, invincible, working in Silicon Valley, you know what I mean? And then and then you start having that and you're like, uh, this is the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. How do I get rid of this as fast right. as possible? Right, huh. right. As soon as you have your oh shit moment, you immediately start taking your health seriously. And it was like, my my why was like how do i fix this and make these go away asap <laughs> yeah that was it so you had like an epiphany in terms of okay i i don't want to go down this road for a shortened life right basically right yeah it was, it was awful i just wanted to 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 rid myself of this problem and i was lucky that i had a naturopathic doctor who was able to help me connect it back to stress prolonged stress that was just not being processed in a healthy way by my body anymore. And honestly, Joel, it was the greatest blessing I could ever have asked for in my life because yeah. it helped me develop the mind body awareness. And yeah. that's something you never lose once you do it for the first time. I'm going so, to yeah, go. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. That's what I was going to end yeah. with. You know, and I know you got, you got to go. I'm just going to use this as an example to sort of sum it all up where, you know, my dad's in, in, uh, outside of, uh, Toronto and, um, he's got some health concerns. And um, so I was asking them, like, what does he eat? And he's, he's telling me what they serve him. And they serve him like the, the croissants and, uh, and they put margarine on it. And I'm like, margarine, like, are you just using margarine, like as a, like, just a descriptor, like, to the, mm -hmm. no, it's really margarine. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, in today's day and age, like, how do we not know, like, especially in a rehab center for like a, a major chronic health debilitating problem that we're still giving like margarine, um, you know, to on a croissant. Here's a croissant. That too. But, <laughs> but the other thing was just that. Um, but I said like margarine, like, I don't think it's like, I think it's common knowledge now that like trans like hydrogenated fats are worse than any other fats ever in the world let alone you leave it out in the forest and you know 10 years later it looks the exact same and no animal has eaten it i don't think it's so anyways this is what i said i think you know you're never too old to not have margarine right mm -hmm. and you're never too old to start the process of data tracking and your body's never too old to be able to have a difference and, and, and do things constructively and feel that difference because your body is very resilient, very forgiving, and it's never too old to get better. And something like this, it's just never too old to have margarine. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so anyways, where do they go? Where, again, where do they go to sign up and, and do this for 30 days and check it out? Headsuphealth.com. Check it out. Hopefully it's helpful. Again, learn how to become your own detective. The data is helping you going to cut through all the BS and just figure out exactly what works. So you and can learn at headsuphealth.com. If you have questions, my email, Dave at headsuphealth.com. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Joel. Awesome. I appreciate it, buddy. We'll do another one soon and you have a, a good, a great evening. Okay. Thanks, thanks brother. Catch you later. Right. Take care.